Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another Adobe XD Masterclass. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe. Hope you're all doing well on this Friday afternoon. Hope you're all excited for the holidays as well. This will be the last Adobe XD Masterclass before we go on winter shutdown, but we will be back in the new year with all sorts of new content, and I would love your feedback. If anyone has been watching these masterclasses and has suggestions on what they'd love to see in 2022, definitely send me a tweet at Pinsky so I can check those out and better plan for next year. Before we dive into things, I want to say a big hello, good morning, afternoon or evening to everyone joining me here live on Behance. We've got Jack and Katarina, Cornell, uh, Mwenda, if I mispronounced your name, I do apologize, Wade and... Uh, who else do we have? And I saw someone, I saw Jason and Robert. Great to see all of you. If you're hanging out on YouTube and you do want to chat along, head on over to behance.net slash Adobe Live so we can all see each other and have a great time. If anyone has questions, definitely throw them in the chat. Hey, Megan, and hey, Rick, and hey, Bliss and Golden Rose. Great to see you all. Awesome. All right, so we're going to dive into things today and we're going to just get going. So over the last few weeks, we have been working on this streaming platform, almost like a blockbuster redesign. It's been a lot of fun. And today we're probably gonna wrap up that project just so it doesn't go too long, especially over the holiday break. And I did post something on Dribble not too long ago on how to use video support in Adobe XD, as well as the end of playback trigger to automatically transition between various clips and we may explore some of that today and we're also going to explore things like auto animate and how that works with video all sorts of really cool stuff so again if you anyone has questions about xd design whatever it might be definitely throw them in the chat i will be taking a peek from time to time hey joanne and drew gareth chris great to see you all and happy holidays indeed all right let's go ahead and hop over to boop, adobe xd and here's where we left off last week. So two weeks ago, we started the process of building out this streaming service. And we started with the landing page or splash page, whatever you want to call it. And we built out the logo, a little bit of a tagline, and of course, a call to action. Now, this call to action could be an email field. It could be sign up buttons, could be all sorts of different things. We also built in a login experience using hover states and states as well. So if I go ahead and play this, we have a nice video in the background just to give a little bit of motion to this particular design. You don't want to go too far with these videos because then it could be a little bit distracting and push people away from the experience. Login. There we go. And then did I wire this one up? Might have been here. Wire this up to our home screen where we have our featured video or series, which in this case is a documentary. And then as we scroll down, we have additional content. Now we did explore how to fake scroll triggers, right? Of course, Adobe XD doesn't have scroll triggers at the moment, but we were exploring how we can use hover states to kind of fake something like that. And I am working on a video on exactly this. It's taking a little bit longer than expected, but I am working on it. And to give you a preview of what that looks like, right? Here is our home screen one more time as we scroll down and as our cursor or pointer, in this case, this, this little guy right here, as this gets to that area, right? All the, that content kind of flies on in and then we have another set of content right down below. And as we move out, it flies out, which is really cool. So again, no, no scroll triggers, but it's a nice workaround if you do need functionality like that. All right, let me dive in here and just bring that stuff back. Perfect. Okay, so today we have a few different options. Of course, we can explore what we will be looking at, what we did look at a little bit earlier in, you know, this featured page where, you know, it might feature a specific movie or show with the auto advancing clips. We might get to that, but I think we might want to start with maybe one of these pages up here, movies, shows, live, or favorites. And I think movies and shows will probably look very similar but the live experience could look a little bit different and that'll give us an opportunity to really explore a few different experiences here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start creating a new artboard 
And if I go ahead and press A to grab my artboard tool, I can select, let's say the web 1920, which is consistent with our other artboards. And of course you can go ahead and duplicate one of these artboards if the content is similar, but you know, this one here, it's a little bit different from what we're going to be designing on this artboard to the right. So I'm going to start nice and fresh. Now we are going with a darker experience. So if you take a look here on this second artboard over to the left, we have a very dark color that we're using as a background. Now, there are a few ways to get this exact color over to our new artboard. We can add it to our colors within our document assets, just like that. Now, if you have an entire artboard selected, it's gonna add all the unadded colors to your document assets. So definitely keep that in mind. It may not be exactly what you're looking for, right? You can also copy so if, if you have the artboard selected, you can Command and Control C. And then if you go over to the next artboard, you can right click and then paste appearance. It's gonna take that background and pop it directly there, which is exactly what we want. And I'm gonna name this Live. All right, someone was asking about The Witcher 2. You know what, I haven't seen The Witcher 1 yet. We'll get to that, maybe over the holiday break, we'll get to some of the shows that we have to catch up on. We have a lot to catch up on. Now, the next thing we wanna bring over is the navigation bar. Now. Last week, I believe, we started that process of building out the navigation bar, which includes the logo over here to the left, which is a component or an instance of a component. We have some text links, and then we have some information to the right, which has a profile photo, notifications, and search. Now, at the moment, this navigation bar itself is not a component. And I think this would be a great opportunity to convert it into a component so that when we do bring it over to another artboard, if we do have to make changes globally, we can very easily do that. So either within our document assets or the component section over to the right or the command or control K shortcut, you will be able to create a component. And now I can copy it and paste it boop, right over there. Now, uh, Drew is saying this may be a dumb question. There are no dumb questions, Drew. But does XD's video playback also support any audio included in the MP4 clip? Yes, it absolutely does. Um, now, this clip doesn't have any audio, but over here to the right, we have our heads up display that we can access. And within this, we also have a mute button. So if you do want the audio playing and it does include audio, just leave it alone. If you don't, you can always turn that audio off. Now the team is working on another update for video so that you can play separate audio as well as the video. So, you know, some of you might know that if you have an artboard selected and you go into prototype mode, you can have a time trigger on that artboard that allows you to play audio playback, right? At the moment, the audio playback and the video will not automatically play at the same time. That update is in the works. Hopefully, maybe January, possibly February, we'll see. Um, but that is something that is in the works and coming hopefully soon. And Jason is saying, do videos still have a 15 megabyte limit? At the moment, they do. And that's one of the things that the team is actively keeping their eye on. The last thing we want is to increase that video limit, you know, 100 megabytes or whatever it might be. And then performance suffers because as you increase video size, performance has the tendency to, you know, drop a little bit. So the team is keeping an eye on it, but that's the plan. We want to increase the video size and also increase the amount of video codecs that we're, we support, not just MP4s, but also MOVs. I guess that would be file formats, not codecs, but codecs too, maybe. Alrighty, perfect. So here we go. So we have our navigation bar in place. Now this is the live page. So what I wanna do is just dive in here and make some changes to the text so that it does reflect it. So we have 700 and 900 for the weight. So I'll just switch that over to 900 and this one over to 700. And I'll shift the active indicator all the way over just so that users know that this is the live experience. All right, that looks good. Now, if you have experienced a live experience, keep saying experience, but you might know that sometimes, especially YouTube TV, I was looking at that quite a bit. You know, when you go to that live page, not all the time is it this full screen view, right? Sometimes you'll see a little bit of a preview at the top and then down below, you'll see some additional content. 
So what I might want to do is right here at the top, I might want to kind of build out that live preview and we'll be able to expand it if we do want to watch it, right? All right, Paul's asking, my question is, can you design and publish a website with just XD not knowing any code? Oh, and Cornell's also saying, can you turn off those pop-up tips? Yes, so under the uh, XD menu down to preferences, you can turn off productivity tips. Usually before these live streams, I reinstall XD because I often have um, an unreleased version installed on this computer. So I reinstall the public version and that automatically turns back on. Now, Paul's question, um, eh, for the most part, no. XD is mostly a design tool, but there are some plugins that can generate code. It's questionable whether that code is decent or not, but if you're just looking for a very basic HTML or CSS experience, that might do the trick. All right, so I've gone ahead and drawn out a rectangle and this will help me grab a video and place it into this particular shape. Now, one thing you're gonna notice, if I hop over to Finder and I do have this video here of basketball, which I downloaded from Adobe Stock and boop, pop that in there. Now, of course it crops it because if I go to, over to my layers, we have our object mask. And if I expand that, we can grab the video and move it around, right? So maybe I'll place it right in this area here. And then when we do get around to creating that expanded view, we'll be able to move that video, you know, full screen. And we'll wanna make sure that this object mask is at the top of our layer stack, but also below our navigation bar. Now, in addition to the video, which I'm going to dive in here and make sure that over to the right, it's set to play automatically. And maybe I'll also have it loop as well. But in addition to that video, we may want a little bit of content that gives a bit of context as to what exactly this show or you know piece of content is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive in here and we are going to start maybe with the title. So with the text tool shortcut key T, we'll just do something like, whoops, sports, no sports, Cast. We'll keep it very generic, make that nice and large. And you know, we've going we've been going with a, a few kind of stylistic typefaces lately. So maybe we'll continue that, but we want to make sure that it's not so stylistic that it's very difficult to read. We want viewers to be able to look at this and immediately understand what's happening, right? So I've been on a kick of just diving into Adobe fonts lately and just finding these very obscure stylistic fonts. One of them has been called Oh No Blaze Face, which is an interesting you know, typeface, right? It's an interesting name. And it also has a lot of different weights to it from 12 all the way up to 72 points. So something like 14, if you take a look, right? It's, it's, ni it's a nice weight, it's nice and uh, heavy. And as you experiment with the different ones, you know, 72, it's a little bit more condensed. 12 or 14, I think should probably do. 14 is a little bit heavier, which is nice. And Wade also posted a link in the chat, not just for Adobe fonts, but also Adobe stock. And we have a completely free section with a ton of videos and photos and illustrations as well. And Julia is saying it's by Oh No Type Foundry. Indeed, it's a great, great typeface. There's also Oh No Fat Face, which is wonderful. Um, you know, there's a few typefaces I've been really digging lately just to kind of go on a little bit of a tangent. I think we explored Mighty Slab last week. And what's cool about Mighty Slab is also includes, if I duplicate this, move it back a bit, and then change the color a touch. They have some, I guess you can call them weights, I suppose, but they have these variations, one, two, three, and four. And it allows you to add not just outlines, but also these nice bevels or shadows or whatever you might want to call it. So that's a fun typeface as well if you're looking. Uh, also, Blenny is a nice kind of stylistic typeface with some really nice details on that. I've been using that in a few other projects. It's quite fun. But anyways, back to what, what we're working on. So we have our title here. And now underneath it, or I guess above it, we might want to indicate that this is a live broadcast. And there are a few ways of doing that, but typically you would have either a rectangle or you know, a pill shaped object and inside there, it would just say live. Now, what you would usually see on most streaming services is something like this. You would have this nice red shape 
Maybe the corners would be slightly rounded, maybe four. Yeah, eight might be too much. Yeah, so four, maybe even two if you wanna really dial that back. And then inside you would just have the word live. Now, this brings up the conversation we've been having quite a bit over the last few weeks is when you're working with typefaces, like oh no blaze face, right? When the text is displayed nice and large, like it is with the word sportscast, if I go ahead and preview this, it looks okay. You can take a look, you'll be able to read it. But when you start shrinking those stylistic typefaces down quite a bit, especially this size here, it becomes a lot more difficult to read. Whether it's capitalized or not capitalized, it's just, it's a bit of an eyesore. So when it goes below, let's say probably 20 points or pixels, you probably wanna switch it over to something a little bit more traditional. And you could go something like, uh, you know, Museo we've been using quite a bit. It's a decent typeface. They have, you know, sans serif, they have serif, they have all sorts of different things. Or something like Astoria, right? It's also a very traditional typeface, but it has a few nice elements to it. You know, it has some curves and, you know, that sort of thing, but it's not so stylistic. That's gonna be a little bit difficult to read. And this one in particular also has, the, you know, extra condensed and bold and all that fun stuff. So if I do something like extra bold condensed, and I can bring this in a little bit, or I can also, you know, select these two live and then over within my properties inspector i can turn padding on so if i do decide to change this to something like live broadcast it'll automatically resize in the background now we did see a question from julia i'll get to that in just a moment but what i think would be interesting because we've been using these yellows and blues throughout this experience i think it could be interesting to kind of pull those colors into this badge up here the live badges even though red is usually associated with live you don't necessarily have to because if you think about the user experience a user is deliberately if i zoom out and they're on the home page they're deliberately clicking on live so when they do that they're expecting live content so we don't necessarily need to use that bright red to indicate a live broadcast right like if this was living on maybe the home page for example it might make more sense because someone to see that be like, oh, that must be live, right? But in this case, we might be able to strive away from that. So if I switch over to my document assets, we can do something like yellow and then maybe that blue. Now, this is a little bit too vibrant. Now, you might remember in this area here, we tweak the yellow and the blue a little bit. We darken the yellow just a touch and we also darken the blue. So I'm gonna add these ones to my document assets as well. And to keep consistency, let's go ahead and pull those in because this is a little bit too vibrant. It's not terrible, but a little bit vibrant. So darker and darker, just like that. And I'll make sure that everything looks good. Much better. All right, let me scroll back up. I did see a question from Julie, I think. Any plans on preview within XD character settings? So I've talked a little bit about the type limitations in the past. And the short answer is that XD desperately needs a new type engine. Now, I don't personally know where that is in the development roadmap, but I know that's something a lot of people want, not just, you know, previews for type, but also things like right to left support and, you know, various other stylistic options. So short answer is definitely on the roadmap. Don't know where it is, but it's a very large project to completely replace the text engine. So, you know, hopefully one day, but definitely something that is needed. All right, now right beside this, we may just want to put something like maybe the date. What, what day is it? December, December 18th, 17th, 17th, 20, whoops, 29. Oh boy, time traveling into the 2018. First I time traveled into the future. Now I'm in the past. I don't even know what year it is anywhere. What is it? 2021, something like that. And then maybe something like 8 p.m. And then for this, we might want to just drop the size. Let's take a look. I think the size might be okay, but the weight is definitely a little bit too heavy. So I'm gonna just go something like Roman possibly. 
Maybe drop the size a little bit. That could do. And shove it on over a little bit closer. That'll do. All right, so we've got our title, we've got our live badge, we have our date, and then, you know, like I mentioned earlier, we might want the ability to expand this so that if a, a viewer does want to watch this episode, they can very easily do that. Of course, there are many ways to do this. Um, you know, on some platforms, you can just swipe down or swipe up, or there's a button of some sort. Oh, Drew says, it's my birthday. Happy birthday, Drew. My daughter's birthday was two days ago. Actually, my, my whole family. So my, very short story. My mom's birthday was on the 12th. My dad's on the 14th. My daughter is on the 15th. And then my sister is tomorrow. December is crazy for us, but happy birthday, Drew. All right. So right below, you know, we've, we designed this out a few weeks ago, I think, when we designed our video player. So we're not going to spend too much time on this. But if we go ahead and create a section over here, just like that, maybe I'll round out the corners a little bit. And this will be essentially be our controls, right? I'm going to set this to a nice darker color. Give it a little bit of a border to separate it from the background. Something in that area there. And again, we're not going to design the entire thing, but over on the right hand side, you know, you would often see something like an expand button, right? And that could look like a bunch of different things. One way you can possibly do it, if you really want to get creative with this, is have a shape like this, right? Round at the corners a touch. You would have just the border. And then you can experiment with the dashes and the gaps. So we can really bring this outwards until we have about four going around the side. And you can also adjust the, the gaps like this and kind of just finesse that into place. Sometimes a little bit tricky to get it right. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but you can also you know round up the corners a little bit and the caps. Or if, you're, if you don't want to you know, mess with this at all, you can use a plugin. So hopping over to my plugins, I have the icons for design plugin right over here. And if I look up something like expand, possibly, there we go. We've got a bunch of open source icons that we can very easily use in this project. Now, I've, I've mentioned this before, this plugin in particular, for whatever reason, takes your icon sometimes and just kind of throws it to the top left of the artboard. Hopefully one day they can get that updated, but for now, definitely keep that in mind. All right, so we've got our icon right over here to the right. And essentially what we want to happen now is when this icon is pressed, the entire experience would get larger. And you know, a few other things would happen. This bar at the bottom here would likely disappear because you would be watching full screen and you don't want any interruptions. The text over here to the right, to the left, other right would also disappear and um, you know possibly the navigation bar as well something you definitely want to think about uh, now like I mentioned we did design this kind of control area in a previous master class can we make our own icons when you can't find one Tanya is asking absolutely so uh, if you do have the ability to create your own icons you know something like this would be very simple to create um, but you know, there's lots of Boolean options. There's, there are pen tools and polygons and ellipses and all sorts of different things that you can use to make your icons. A lot of people do icon design directly in XD. So absolutely. If you have the time, patience and ability, definitely go ahead and do it. Now to save a little bit of that time, I'm going to just hop over here to this secret document that I have over here and boop, there's our controls. Perfect. I'm going to make sure that if we have any, and we do have a few components in here. Specifically, you might remember we have this reaction component that we created with Lottie files a few weeks ago. If you missed that masterclass on creating a video player, definitely go back and watch that. We had a lot of fun and we created all these little hover effects and volume controls and settings and things like that. And that reaction thing is just all sorts of fun. But the point of this, what we want to do 
is we want to use that expand icon over here to the right to control the size of this entire video player. Now to do that, what we want to do is make sure that all of this is a component, right? So we're gonna select this control section. We're gonna select the text, which I'm also going to group. And we're also gonna select the video in the background, right? And we wanna place all of this into a larger component. So plus button over to the right, and I can go ahead and name this video player. And then now that that's done, what we want to make sure to do is create the additional state. So the expanded state and also the collapse state, which is, you know, sort of like this one here. Wade, thank you very much for posting that link in the chat. So oh, over to the right one more time, I'm gonna press that plus button and we're gonna create a new state. And this is going to be the expanded state. And now what we want to do is dive in here and really design what this is going to look like. So if I double click in, I can select the video, maybe expand this, which is going to expand that layer mask and also grab the video and move that down as well. Might need to expand this a little bit. This will be moved down and our text will be moved down as well. But like I mentioned a little bit earlier, we don't necessarily want the controls or the text to be visible. We maybe only want it to be visible when a hover takes place, which is a whole other story. We'll get to that. So for here, we'll just maybe drop the opacity to zero and drop the opacity to zero. Now we could have dropped the opacity when those elements were up here as well, but to add a little bit of movement to this experience during that transition, I think it'd be kind of nice to drop them down and then drop the opacity as well, right? So we have our default state and we have our expanded state. Now I'm gonna make sure to move the navigation bar above. And now what we wanna make sure to do is wire this up. And I, I am noticing a few other issues. We'll get to that in just a moment. But we wanna make sure to wire this up so that you know when someone does click on expand, it actually expands. So if we go into prototype mode, what we want to do is find that expand icon, right? We dive in here and we have an icon. Now, we've run into a problem, right? This particular icon is already a component. Now, it's a component we previously created on that other masterclass that we just linked. But because this is a component inside of a larger component, if we were to add another interaction on this nested component, we will not be able to, down here, select that expanded state, right? Because you can only select states on a parent's component or that particular component. So what we'll want to do as a workaround is if you take a look inside of the layers panel over here to the left, we have our component. And this is the component we cannot add or trigger used as a trigger for the larger component. But command and control G to place it into a group. Now that it's placed into a group, we can add an interaction on that group just by clicking on this blue handle. And now within the properties inspector, we can choose our expanded state. So definitely keep that in mind. Maybe one day that will be improved. But for now, if you need to use nested component to trigger the larger component, pop it into a group and you should be good to go. Now here, we we'll wanna make sure auto animate is enabled. Otherwise it'll just kind of either cut or fade to that next state. So we'll choose auto animate and maybe we'll do maybe ease in out duration, let's try 0.6 seconds and we'll see what that looks like. And if I press play, we have our video playing and then I can hover over expand and tap on it. And now we have our video playing full screen, right? Now, I mentioned earlier that I did notice specifically in this collapse state, if we take a look at the top here, these icons are a little bit difficult to read. Now on this side here, it's not too bad, this text, but if the video was different, if it was brighter, it would be, you know, still a little bit difficult. So just to solve that, I can maybe add a very quick overlay. We did talk about this last week. So if you missed that, definitely go back and watch it. But linear gradient, I'm going to set both colors to black. But the color on the bottom, I'm going to drop in opacity. I just want to make sure that it's behind the navigation bar. So that those icons, right, if I turn it off, and on, they're just a little bit easier to see. And I can drop the opacity a little bit if it's a bit too strong. But one more time, there we go. 
Now, the big question is, how do we bring that back? Because I mentioned, you know, we don't really have a hover state on this. So we did explore that in that class that Wade mentioned, the, all about Lottie files and building that video player. But from this expanded state, we can go ahead and actually add a hover state, right? So if I go ahead and add a hover state right here, I'm going to dive in and grab the text and the controls and bring it up, right? Now, the hover state by default gets linked to our default state, right? Something to keep in mind. So in that case, in this case, we do not want that. So if I hop into prototype mode, you're going to notice right here, we have our hover state. I'm going to delete that. We want to go to our expanded state, click. We want hover and then we want auto. Uh, we probably don't need auto animate to be honest. Transition and then we want to go to our hover state. Maybe we'll do a little bit of a dissolve, maybe 0.2 seconds to keep it nice and short. So now, right, we have our video one more time. We can expand it. And then we have our hover state and we can, well, we don't have collapse set up just yet, but if we go over to our hover state, dive in here, find that group and click and then transition to our default state. I missed it. What did I do? Oh, I have hover instead of tap, which definitely don't want. And I also want to make sure that the video continues to play. Right now it's set to no playback. We want to continue to play automatically. And the nice thing is some of you may have noticed that if you have video playing and you have auto animate set up, it will continuously playing throughout those auto animate states, not just on a component and state level, but also an artboard level, which is really cool. One more time, right? Expand, the video keeps playing. Should have kept playing, but, and there we go. Perfect. All right, so now that we have that set up, what we want to do is add some additional content right down below. And this will, you know, this could be things like news broadcasts and um, additional movies, maybe just for you or something like that, right? And it's very similar to what we have over here. But there'll be a few changes. So I'm going to dive in here and we'll do something like just for you. Let's try something like Museo, maybe Museo Sands Condensed could be kind of fun. And we'll really bump up, up that weight to about 900. We drag out some guides so I make sure everything is set up or lined up. And Cornell was asking, what if you want the control panel to appear only if you hover over the bottom part of the video? How would you do that? Oh, that's a great question. So in that masterclass a few weeks ago that Wade once again uh, linked, I believe we did cover exactly that. You can find spot at the bottom. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that just so that this makes a little bit more sense. So expanded, right? We have our hover state, but if you take a look in prototype mode, we have the hover state triggered on the entire experience. Let's delete that. Now in here, what we can do is we can dive in, even though this is not the default state, we can still do it on the expanded state because we don't really need it on the default state. So we can dive in here and we can create maybe a hotspot, maybe the bottom third possibly, right? Now this we don't definitely don't need to see, but we may want to see it when the hover does take place. You know what, let's go. Uh, I'm going to add it to our default state because I also want it to appear in the hover state. So I'm going to pop it in right about here, right? And this one, very similar to that overlay at the top, we're gonna set a linear gradient, but it's gonna be kind of flipped. So both colors again will be black, but the color at the top will be set to 0% opacity. And this will be called overlay. I'm gonna move this behind the controls and the text, but in this default state, we want the appearance at zero. And then the expanded state, that's where we want Actually, we also want it at zero, but we want to be able to use this as the hover, right? Or the hover trigger. So in prototype mode, instead of selecting the entire component, we're going to select just that overlay. We are going to click on the blue handle. And just like we did before, we're going to set overlay or sorry, hover as the trigger and then the hover state as the destination. We can do a simple transition, dissolve. Let's try 
0.4 seconds, right? And then from the hover state, we just wanna make sure that that overlay is set to, let's try about 60% opacity, right? So now we can play, we can expand, the video keeps playing. And now if we hover over, there we go. Now, I just caught my small mistake, right? This is working great, but you're, you're gonna notice the expand looks great, but when we hover, the video restarts playing. And this kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier. If you have auto animate as the type between the transitions, then the video will continuously play back, but it did not because in prototype mode, I have a transition instead of auto animate. So let's go ahead and switch it over to auto animate. We'll keep the, the same settings. And now that should look a little bit better, right? Much better. So we have our hover state and now we can go ahead and the video plays back beautifully. That looks a little bit better. That's a great suggestion, Cornell. All right. So let's go ahead and re, re or unhide the just for you section. And we're going to add a little bit of a thumbnail here, just like that. Maybe I'll round up the corners just a little bit. And whoops, we'll add a little bit of a border. Very slight border. Now, excuse me, of course you can't see much right now because the color is white. But if I go ahead and set that to something a little bit darker, we have a little bit of a very subtle border on there. What we may also want is another way to indicate that these specific shows are live. Again, not completely necessary. Also, this badge here in the controls section, possibly also not necessary. But you know what? What we're going to do is we're going to grab this guy here. Maybe paste it right down here. That looks pretty good. Might be a little bit too close, but we'll see. And then down below, we might want to add in some additional information about these particular shows, right? So for example, we might want to do 8 p.m. on XDTV. TV. 13 minutes remaining. Now, the text on this obviously is way too large. We can stick with Museo. Maybe we'll do Museo Sans, and then we'll drop it down to something like 16 and then maybe we'll drop the weight as well to about 500 we probably don't need something like 900 or 700 for something like that but the section below we might want this to be the title right so this might be maybe a, a murder mystery or something components of a murder components get it hmm I think I'm clever, but I'm not. So this one here, because it's the title, it's the main focus, you might want to bump up not just the size, but also the weight as well. So this one, we could possibly get away with 900. Maybe I'll make this all caps. And that could potentially work. It might be a little bit too large. I might drop these a little bit. That'll do. Was that, was that joke a prototype? I tried. I tried. All right. That one looks pretty good. Now, considering all of these cards will kind of follow the same, uh, you know, style, what we want to do is use a repeat grid. Of course, we can use a stack and we can components and all sorts of different things, but I think a repeat grid should work quite nicely. And, you know, there are a few ways we can display cards like this. We can, oops, we can kind of have you know, a few going across and then lining up exactly with our other guides that we have partially set up right there, right? We can have a bunch going across like that, or we can also have a few going across and extending off of the artboard. And I think that could be an interesting thing to do. Let me actually just dive in here for a second, make some of this a little bit larger. Let's move this inwards a little bit. Maybe 16 could work. That'll do. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all this information here, and I'm going to, right over here to the right-hand side, we're going to create a repeat grid. Boop, there we go. 
and then we'll drag a few shows across. In terms of the spacing, we'll keep it nice and tight, somewhere around eight in between each one. So we have about one, two, three, four, five, nicely visible, and then we have possibly one over to the side as well. So you have to really think about, you know, is that the optimal amount of shows to display? Do you want four? Do you want five? Do you want six? You probably don't want too many because then it gets a little bit busy, but I think this could work. I might want to just bring this in just a touch. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, and then one over to the side. Now, of course, we can now take this repeat grid and place it into a scroll group, right? So we can create a horizontal scroll group within the properties inspector. So if we did have additional videos, maybe I'll add one more, just like that, right? Now we can scroll and see them just like that. Now, of course, the scroll group is kind of locked on this left-hand side. So in this case, because I want the videos to kind of fly off the artboard over to the left, I'm going to extend this scroll group just like that. And it's going to snap into place so that we can very easily scroll left and right. You can also click and drag to move them around as well. Perfect. All right. So that section is looking pretty good. Of course, we can dive in and make changes to the actual text. We can add some images in there. Um, but let's go ahead and add one more section down at the bottom, or maybe two more sections. We'll see. And this section down here, actually, you know what? Let's group the, the section here and call this just for you. And then we'll add another section right down here. Maybe this is um, possibly upcoming. Now, this one could be a little bit different because these are not necessarily live shows. These are maybe upcoming videos, series, documentaries, whatever it might be. So they're not necessarily live. So you may not want to highlight as many of them. So maybe we'll display three of them going across, right? And to make sure we can display three really nicely, of course, we can eyeball it. But what I like to do is create a rectangle all the way across. So gu guide on the left, all the way to the guide on the right. And then within the properties inspector, let me zoom in here. Under the width, we can just divide by three. Now, if we were to simply just divide by three, we're going to, you know, each of those shows is going to be very flush with each other. And let me show you what, what that looks like, which is not what we want, by the way. So if I were to do that, you know, duplicate one and then duplicate another right to the guide, they're right on top of each other, which we certainly don't want. We want a little bit of breathing room in between each one. So back in here, in addition to dividing by three, you might want to just, you know, subtract eight or subtract four, depending on the, the grid system that you're using, right? So now, repeat grid. And if I go ahead and, oops. If I bring this in, it'll snap really nicely like that, right? Perfect. All right, but of course we want to add some additional content. I'm gonna actually copy the style on this particular shape just by selecting it, copy, right click, paste appearance. And then we can also possibly, just to keep consistency, grab the text elements here and just use them over here as well. And we did have about 16 pixels in between these elements. That looks pretty good. And for now, we will keep the text the same. Ideally, we would dive in here and make changes to reflect whatever this content is. But for the sake of time, we're going to simply select these, repeat grade, command and control R, and drag it across. Perfect. And then finally, we might want one more section right down below, and this could be maybe on demand content, right? So in addition to the live content and the upcoming content, which I want to make sure is spaced out properly, we'll do 16 here, and I'm going to change this to about 16 as well. This will be upcoming. And then we're going to we're going to have one more section and very similar to this section down here. So I might just actually grab this section here. And 
pop it in here. I want to make sure to use the same typefaces just to keep consistency. Now, ideally, this typeface here would probably be the same as this one over here. So definitely keep those things in mind. You don't want to stray too far away from your other screens, especially if it's all part of the same experience. I'm going to copy, select this one and paste the appearance. And this one, we might want to just do something like new on demand. And we'll make sure it's 16. That looks good. And these images here, of course, and actually, you know what? I was going to say we can definitely keep these images, but just in case you missed the last two master classes, we've been using the movie poster plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and select all five of these images. And then within my plugins panel, one more time, I also have the movies posters plugin or the movie posters plugin. I think that's what I tried to say. And then here you can enter a year and also filter by genre. So let's say maybe animation from 2005. I don't remember what movies were big in 2005, but we're about to find out. Ah, Toy Story, of course. Great movie. Lion King. Lion King was too... No, there's no way Lion King was 2005. Was it really? That seems wrong. I think that's wrong. Maybe that was just like one of the top most... Either that or I'm just very old. I don't know. All right, so we have our sections. We have our on demand, which I'm going to group. We have our upcoming and we have our just for you, right? And what's nice is we can now dive in here and actually select all of these sections here. So we have just for you, upcoming, on demand. We're gonna place them all into a group, so a larger group. 95, Toy Story was 99. Yeah, okay, I'm not going completely crazy. And I'm gonna place, I'm gonna, so I place them all into a group and I'm going to name this something like content. And then what's really nice is we can now in the properties inspector, turn a stack on. And what's great about this is not only can you control the amount of space in between each section. So if you want to do something like 70 or 80 or whatever it might be, right? It might be a bit too much. Let's drop it to about, I don't know, 54. But you can also dive in here because a stack is turned on and just whoop, move them around. So all the other sections kind of split out of the way, depending on where you want to move things. But I think I'm pretty happy with just for you upcoming and new on demand. I think that looks pretty good. Now, if we do hop over to Finder, for example, right, I do have some clips here. I think I have some other clips somewhere else. Let me just take a quick peek. Actually, I'll just do this. All right, so I have some thumbnails, and I also have some video clips. Now, what would be kind of cool, depending on the platform, this, I mean, it may work on TV experiences as well, but definitely desktop and web. What you might want to do is maybe for either a live show or an upcoming show, you may want to give a little bit of a preview of what that's going to look like on, you know, on hover. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by dragging an image in here. And right now it's in a repeat grid. So if I do drag one image in, it's gonna repeat throughout the entire grid. So in that case, I'm just going to ungroup the grid for now. I'll dive in and let's drag this, maybe this one here, Oop, pop that in there. And now this one is upcoming. So we're, we're gonna change this to something like premieres tomorrow, 4 p.m. And we'll keep the same title the same. But what we want to happen is when your cursor goes over top of this particular preview, it's going to play a little bit of a clip in the background or you know on top of it, right? So we have this here and we want to hover over it and a, a preview will play. What we want to do here is turn this into a component and very fitting considering the title of this particular show. So over within the Properties Inspector, one more time, we're going to create a component. And now we want to create a hover state. Now, what's nice is you don't need that video that we're going to use as a preview on the default state. So we're going to press the play button. We're going to create a hover state. And we're going to dive in here. We want to replace this photo with a video. Now, if I were to simply grab one of these videos and try to place it in there, it's not going to work because the photo is technically already a mask, right? So it's going to pop it separately. So we can either create a separate object or 
we can just select this photo, change the color to something else, and then pop a video in, right? Just like that. And we we'll wanna make sure on this hover state that the video is set to play automatically. And do we wanna loop it? Possibly. Might as well, right? There we go. So we have our default state, play, scroll down, and we have our video. Now, what you're gonna notice is that there's a little bit of a delay. As I move my cursor over top of it, it takes a second or two, well, half a second or so, 0.3 seconds to be exact, to actually initiate that video. And that's because auto animate is the action. So when my cursor goes over top of it, auto animate performs a little bit of a fade for 0.3 seconds. Now, if you don't want that or don't need that, what you wanna do is go into prototype mode. It's already selected as the hover trigger. And instead of auto animate as the type, switch it over to transition with no animation. So now if I, one more time, if I hover, it kicks off almost immediately, right? That looks a little bit better. And we can do the same thing with the other ones as well. So for example, maybe there will be, well, we'll just do this. We'll pop that one in there, create a component, hover state, change the color, and we'll do another video, maybe this one here. Ideally, these would all be different videos or different, uh, you know, series or whatever it might be. But considering I don't have any other videos queued up and ready to go, we'll just stick with this. Prototype mode and we'll switch this over to transition. You can also have one component over here to the left, and then you can use an instance of this component to create the other ones as well. Or you can create separate components, whichever is easiest for you. And then we'll do one more. Boop. And then just maybe just to show that there's a little bit of variation, we'll just change this to this clip here. Oh, I have to remember to change the image, pop that in there, make sure this is set to play automatically. And then just to make sure it kicks off right away. Oh, you know what I did not do? is create a component. Terrible. Boop, much better. Hover state. Drag that in. Make sure it's set to play automatically. Switch it over to transition with no animation. And now we should be good to go. So I can go ahead and hover over this one. We can see a bit of a preview. We can hover over the next, and then the next one as well. That looks pretty good. Now, of course, because we have these objects inside of a larger group, we can also turn a stack on on this group as well, in addition to the much larger group that we have. So if we did want to rearrange some of these, just to give a bit more variation, we can very easily do that. And one more time, we've got our previews, right? Now, the one thing we're gonna notice is that we have our video at the top. If I do go ahead and expand it, we have all this other content on top of it. And that's because we wanna make sure that that video player always remains on the top and the navigation bar as well. So if we do go ahead and launch the preview, we can now expand it. It's gonna go over top of all that other content. We can hover and then close it down, right? And there we go. Renee is asking, would it be quicker to create one with hover video and duplicate that one, then switch out the images and videos. It probably would be, and it would probably also keep your document assets and components section a little bit cleaner, even though you know now we can go ahead and create groups. So this could be our videos group, for example, of our components. Um, but yeah, I think you're probably exactly right. And especially once the team does get around to uh, releasing the update that allows you to have instance, up, better update your instances of components, which they are actively working on, then that'll make your process even easier. But either way, whichever you feel more comfortable, but if I was designing on my own, I would absolutely do it the way Renee was uh, suggesting. All right, looks like we are out of time. Kyle T. Webster is coming up in just a few minutes with his illustration masterclass. 
And for me, hope you all have a wonderful holiday. We will be back the week of January 4th, I believe. So more masterclasses are coming. Again, send me a tweet at Pinsky to let me know what you want to see in 2022, not just for masterclasses, but also content as well. Do you want UI kits? Do you want more videos, long videos, short videos, more live streams, whatever it might be? I'm all ears. So have a great holiday, everyone, and I will see you all next time.